Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have another interesting JE advanced problem in thermodynamics. Well, let's read it together and see what we're dealing with. A flat plate is moving normal to its plane through a gas under the action of a constant force F. And I drew a little picture here, even though the test didn't come with the picture, but you can imagine some plate that's moving through a gas with a force applied to it. The force is constant. The gas is kept at a very low pressure, so the very low pressure on this side of the plate. The speed of the plate is much less than the average speed of the, of the gas molecules. Now we use V for the speed of the plate and U for the speed of the molecules. Which of the following options are true? Now it could be one, could be all four of them, maybe it could be none, we'll see. But again, if you take a look at C and D, they're kind of opposite to one another. Let's look at C. The plate will continue to move with constant non-zero acceleration at all times. So typically, when a force is applied to an object, it will accelerate F equals ma. But of course, we mean the net force. So that means that if it will continue to move with a constant acceleration, that means that the net force never changes. But as the plate moves through the gas faster and faster and faster, then more pressure will build up because you're pushing through the gas and the pressure of the gas will push back. The faster you move through the gas, the greater the pressure and therefore the net force will not be constant. So that means that C cannot be true. Now D says, at a later time, the external force F balances the, the resistive force. In other words, eventually the resistive force, that's the way they should have framed it, the resistive force will continue to increase as you move faster and faster and faster and eventually the force pushing back will equal the force that pushes the plate. Once they're equal to each other, the acceleration stops. So that means at some later time they will balance out and that is a true statement. All right, so typically C and D cannot be true at the same time. What about A and B? It says that the pressure difference between the leading and trailing faces of the plate is proportional to U times V. Well, let's explore that one. First of all, notice that the pressure is proportional to the velocity square of the molecules. Now, on the leading edge of the face, since the face is pushing into the molecules, the effective velocity of the molecules will increase by the velocity V. So on the front end, the pressure will be equal to or will be proportional to u plus v quantity squared, the velocity of the molecules plus the velocity of the plate. On the back end, on the trailing end, and on the trailing end, the pressure is proportional to u minus v because the trailing end is moving away from the molecules, pushing into the plate. And of course, we have to square that as well. And so the difference in the pressure is therefore equal the pressure in the front minus the pressure trailing. So in this case, that would be U plus V quantity squared. And of course, again, we should be proportional to that because it's not equal to, we need some other terms. And uh, minus U minus V quantity squared. Now let's see what that adds up to. So this is equal to U squared plus 2UV plus V squared minus here we get u squared minus 2uv plus v squared. And if we apply the minus sign, we get u squared plus 2uv plus v squared minus u squared plus 2uv and minus v squared. And notice that at this point, this u squared will cancel out that u squared. This v squared will cancel out that v squared. And we're left with, this is equal to 4uv. Now notice, the pressure difference is proportional to 4 times the product u times v. Which means that if we take a look at A, the pressure difference between the leading and trailing phases is proportional to uv. And that is indeed the case. So therefore, A is correct as well. What about the resistive force experienced by the plate? Well notice, the resistive force, the force resistance, is going to be proportional to the change in the pressure. The greater the pressure, or the greater the pressure difference, the greater the resistive force. Because you have greater pressure in the front, less pressure in the back. And so, since 
the change in pressure is proportional to U times V, that means the, the resistive force is also proportional to U times V. And of course, we can see that the resistive force experienced by the plate is proportional to V because as V increases, remember U remains constant, but as V increases, it's a constant times a changing V. As V goes up, the resistive force goes up, so therefore B is the correct statement as well. So we have three correct statements in this problem, A, B, and D, with the only one that's not correct, the statement C. And that is how it's done. So the gas, the gas goes on in directions, right? So the molecules go in directions, so we only take the component of the motion of each molecule towards the plate, and that's typically how it's done. And that's what gives the pressure inside a container or, in, or against the moving flat plate. That would and be the pressure. the plate moves back, there's also gas behind the plate. So it moves through the gas, so there's also gas behind the plate. So if the plate wasn't moving, the pressure on both sides would be exactly the same. Once the plate begins to move, the pressure on the front side will increase as it's going faster and faster, with the plate being pushed into the molecules, and the pressure on the back side will decrease because you're moving away from the molecules. And so the pressure difference increases as you go faster and faster. So it is equal to four times UV. Since U is a constant and four is a constant, it's proportional to V actually. Yeah. That's how it's done. Interesting problem. And I think you can do this one in three minutes. <laughs>